Hi friends, uh, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Today we have to discuss about difference between isolated I.O. and memory mapped I.O. in computer architecture course, computer organization course and computer organization and architecture course. To perform the input output operations between the CPU and I.O. peripheral devices in the computer system, we have to use two techniques. First one is isolated I.O. and the second one is memory mapped I.O. Now we can go for what are the differences between isolated I.O. and memory mapped I.O. The first point in isolated I.O. Isolated I.O. uses separate address space for both memory and I.O. devices. So this address space can be allocated for memory for performing the memory operations such as read and write. And this address space can be assigned for performing I.O. operations such as read and write for I.O. devices. So the address space can be allocated for memory is different. The address space can be allocated for I.O. devices is different. So separate address space can be allocated for both memory and I.O. devices. Whereas in the case of memory mapped I.O. the same address space can be assigned for both memory and I.O. devices. So here this address space can be allocated for I.O. devices for performing read and write operations. The remaining address space can be assigned for performing of memory operations such as read and write for memory. So the same address space can be assigned for both memory and I.O. devices for performing their operations. Whereas in the case of isolated I.O. separate address space can be allocated for memory, separate address space can be allocated for I.O. devices. This is the first point. Now we can go for the second point. Here this is the CPU. CPU is communicated with memory by using three buses. First one is address bus. Second one is data bus. Third one is control bus. Address bus contains only address information. Data bus contains only information and control bus contains only control information such as control signals. In the case of isolated I.O. separate control bus for memory and I.O. So for memory a separate control bus we have to use for I.O. devices a separate control bus can be used. Separate control bus can be used for memory and I.O. devices. But address bus and data bus are same for both memory and I.O. devices. So in the case of isolated I.O. separate control bus can be used for memory and I.O. devices and same address bus and data bus can be used for memory and I.O. devices. But whereas in the case of memory mapped I.O. same address bus, data bus and control bus can be used for both memory and I.O. devices. Okay, same address bus can be used for memory and I.O. devices. Same data bus can be used for memory and I.O. devices. Same control bus can be used for 
memory and IO devices. Hence, we can say that same address bus, data bus, control bus can be used for both memory and IO devices in the case of memory mapped IO. Whereas in the case of isolated IO, separate control bus can be used for memory and IO devices, but same address bus and data bus can be used for memory and IO devices. Now we can go for third point. The third point, limited instructions we have to use in isolated I.O. such as in, comma, out. That means in isolated I.O. we have to use only limited number of instructions. For example, in instruction is used for transferring the input information into the IO device. Out instruction is used for transferring the information from the IO device. Into the IO device, we have to use in instruction. From the IO device, we have to use out instruction. These two instructions are used in isolated IO. Hence, we can say that limited instructions are used in isolated I.O. Whereas, in the case of memory mapped I.O., any instruction which references to memory can be used in memory mapped I.O. Such as load instruction, store instruction and move instruction. So these instructions are used for loading the data into the memory, storing the data <coughs> into the memory, moving the data <coughs> into and out of the memory. So any instruction which references to memory can be used in memory mapped I.O. Whereas here, limited number of instructions we have to use in isolated I.O. Next, fourth one, isolated I.O. is more complex and costlier than memory mapped I.O. as more buses are used. To build isolated I.O. it is more complex. To build isolated I.O. It is very costlier when compared to the memory mapped I.O. Because here more number of buses we have to use in the isolated I.O. Here in the case of memory mapped I.O. Memory mapped I.O. is less complex and cheap. They are easier to build. Here less number of buses we have to use in memory mapped I.O. so that memory mapped I.O. is less complex to build and cost is also cheap when compared to the isolated I.O. Next one, fifth point, comparatively larger in size. Isolated I.O. is comparatively larger in size because more number of buses we have to use. Whereas memory mapped I.O. is smaller in size because less number of buses we have to use in memory mapped I.O. Next one is isolated I.O. is a slower whereas memory mapped I.O. is faster because same address bus, data bus, control bus can be used in memory mapped I.O. so that 
ऑप मैम ऑपरेशन कैन बी डन वेरी फास्टली इन द केस ऑफ मेमोरी मैप्ड आईओ वेर एज इन द केस ऑफ आइसोलेटेड आईओ ओनली कंट्रोल बस इज डिफरेंट फॉर बोथ मेमोरी एंड आईओ डिवाइसेस द सेम एड्रेस एंड डेटा बस कैन बी यूज फॉर बोथ मेमोरी एंड आईओ इन आइसोलेटेड आईओ नेक्स्ट वन Efficient I/O operation can be done due to using separate bus for data and addressing. Here we have to use separate address bus and a separate data bus. We have to use in isolated I/O. Hence, efficient I/O operation can be done. In the case of isolated I/O, we have to use separate address bus. separate data bus for both memory and io hence efficient operation io operation can be done in the case of isolated io whereas in the case of memory mapped io so here uh, in efficient io operation due to using single bus for data and addressing so inefficient io operation can be done in the case of memory mapped io because the same bus can be used for uh, memory and io the same data bus can be used for memory and io devices same address bus can be used for memory and io devices so hence we can say that in efficient io operations can be done in memory mapped io because a single bus can be used for both data and addressing next eighth point memory and io devices uses different control instructions for read and write operations here we have to perform read operation on io devices we have to use io rc signal io read control signal to perform write operations on io devices we have to use io wc signal so input output write control signal okay to perform read and write operations on io devices we have to use io rc and io wc these two instructions are called as control instructions on io devices for performing read and write operations in the same way to perform a memory read operation and a memory write operation we have to use move instruction okay whereas in the case of a uh, memory mapped io no separate control signal is needed for memory and io devices here we do not use the separate control signal for memory and io devices in the case of memory mapped io because the same control bus can be used for both the memory and the io devices because of the reason we can say that no separate control signal is needed for both the memory and io devices next ninth point the, the addresses for isolated io devices are called as ports whatever the addresses that we are used for io devices can also be called as ports hence we can say that i isolated io can also be called as port mapped io whereas in the case of memory mapped io the addresses that are used for memory mapped io can also be called as memory locations on the memory map whatever the addresses that we are used in the memory address memory mapped io can also be called as 
memory locations in the memory map. So these are the nine differences between isolated IO and memory mapped IO. I hope all of you understanding this video. If you really understanding this video, please put your comments on the comment box. I will clarify your doubts. If you really like this video, please subscribe my YouTube channel. Tivvela Srinivasara. After subscribing, please share this channel to your friends and classmates. Thank you. Thank you one and all for watching this video.